Today we travel to a world that we have not yet visited on this channel and go down a road we have not yet seen. Today we are going to be talking about Star Wars plot leaks. Now some of you might be wondering why I haven't talked about plot leaks in the past and the simple answer is they're all fake and none of them matter at all. But today I thought Oh wait, some of them are actually pretty funny, and it is quite fun to spot their little inconsistencies and little bits that make it quite obvious that they're fake. And also some of them have got some good ideas, and some of them have got some bad ideas, and I think it just might be fun to just discuss some of those. Our first leak is by a Redditor by the name of Intelligent Anybody. He says that he is an employee of Lucasfilm who has received a bunch of information from friends who work higher up in the chain and he can apparently confirm that this is all real. Now he doesn't actually provide any way of how he can confirm that this is all real or how he can prove anything, but that's okay, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you've got to just look into their story and see how it makes sense and if it does then maybe there's a possibility. As for this guy's story, it doesn't make any sense, there's a lot of errors, and it's actually quite a fun read. The first thing he says in the post is that the film is going to be set two months to a year from episode 8, and not five years as some previous quote unquote leaks have suggested. Now, I don't think this is such a good idea. I think there should be at least two years between the movie. Um, the movies, and this is just because I think there needs to be some time between that ending that we got in episode 8 with pretty much all of the resistance being able to fit on the Falcon and something being built to fight the First Order. For it to be two months to a year after episode 8 would leave no time in the middle. We couldn't see another Star Wars movie directly after episode 8 like we saw after episode 7 because it just, there wouldn't be that much stuff going on. There's no way in one movie we're able to see the growth of the Resistance and then the destruction of the First Order, if that's how they're gonna end it. Um, I just think it makes no sense for it to be this close to Episode Eight. I think the time gap will have to be at least two to three years, maybe even five. Basically, then he says that the Resistance and the New Republic, which doesn't exist anymore, but okay, have merged to create the New Rebellion, and the New Rebellion looks back to the original one for inspiration. First of all, the New Republic was destroyed by Starkiller Base, the, pretty much the New Republic's just gone. That's, I don't know how that could have been less clear, as well as the Resistance already looking to the old Rebellion for inspiration. That was just because Leia was there, and sure, they looked back, but it's a new fight. I don't know, <laughs> I don't understand this, and the new, the new Rebellion, please. If it's called the New Rebellion, I'm not going to see Episode 9. That is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. So then explained in the crawl that Leia has died, I think that is the only way they're really going to be able to do it unless they recast or something like that. I'm thinking I might make a video about if Leia should be recast for episode 9, but I'll get to that later. But basically it says that she died of natural causes, and that after analysis um, they found that the lack of oxygen that she had during her Mary Poppins fly in episode 8 sped up that process. I guess that's fine, but I'm not, they're not really going to talk about that in the crawl, so I don't know. This next line in this post is probably my favourite part about the whole thing. I don't know if this is a mistake or... I mean, obviously it was a mistake, but I don't know how they messed it up. But the next line reads, word for word, Poe Dameron has apparently been elected the leader of the First Order. Now, I think it's meant to be either... Kylo Ren has apparently been elected the leader of the First Order, even though he wasn't really elected, he just kind of took control. Or it's meant to say Poe Dameron has apparently been elected the leader of the Resistance, but they don't elect leaders either, and I don't know why apparently is the key word here, but okay, okay, this, this, this is a reputable Lucasfilm employee that knows what he's talking about. And then basically there is a scene that I think is kind of cool, 
apparently Kylo Ren's coronation ceremony is happening, which I don't think the First Order does, but okay, I guess he's getting coronated, and it's happening at the same time as Leia, Leia's funeral, which is kind of cool, and they've got these cool visual thing where they're both fading with each other, and again, that sounds very cool, um, and it's also happening because they're laying um, Leia to rest on, Han or near, sorry, Han Solo's tomb as well, so there's this nice kind of funeral for both Leia and Han, um, that, that does sound pretty good, I think they will do something acknowledging Han in episode 9. But then, in this really weird scene, apparently it's revealed that there's an attack on the Resistance ship where Leia's funeral is happening on the ship. But it's talking about how she's being, like, buried in a tomb or, or near Han Solo's tomb. So apparently this Resistance ship has just got Han Solo's tomb on it, <laughs> which is just... <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Apart from the fact that Han Solo did fall down a shaft now, I think about it, into a base that then, you know, became a sun. So, I, I don't know how he'd have a... T I don't know what's going on. This leak is just so contradictory to its own ideas. Now, this next thing that they talk about is honestly one of the coolest things in this, in this entire post. Probably the coolest thing. And... This would be, if something like this happened, I'd actually be very happy. This is a great idea. Um, the thing with this post is that they've actually got some good ideas for little scenes and little moments, but they haven't really tied everything else together. I feel like they came up with it as they wrote it, but this scene, likewise, is... it's very cool. Basically, the ghost of Snoke appears to Kylo after he's been coronated. Basically, Kylo Ren is at first fearful because he's seeing the ghost of someone that he betrayed, but Snoke smiles at Kylo and tells him that he did it. He's confused at first, but then Snoke laughs, because by killing Snoke, Kylo Ren became stronger and also crowned himself the Supreme Leader, and Kylo inherited all that power. So Snoke, I guess in a way, is proud of him, for betraying him, because that, I guess, is a very good dark side thing to do. He took power, so the ghost of Snoke then evaporates into thin air before confining itself into a small black ring, which Kylo picks up and puts onto one of his fingers. Now that scene sounds amazing. I love that they bring Snoke back, and I love that they use him a good way. The only issue is with the whole lore about ghosts and Sith not being able to come back, but I think it could work, because he only came back for a little while, meaning it wouldn't break the whole, I guess, irony that only light side people who don't really care about having power and life eternally can keep it, but it means that he can come back for a little amount of time, and his soul is almost trapped within this ring, and it's the ring that he had in episode 8. So I think this is such a great idea, um, and I hope a scene like this happens. I really want Snoke to come back in a way like this. As for this post, I'm not going to read the rest of it, because there are some little nuggets of good things. So I think if you do want to read the rest of it, the link is in the description. But I'm not going to read the rest of this, because I do need to move on to some other ones. This next post is by a Redditor by the name of Fusls. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how he meant to pronounce his name. Now his post is actually quite interesting, he's got some very interesting plot points in it. But first, I really want to call him out on the bullshit that he's pulling across by saying that his post is a real early storyboard that he has read for episode 9. Now he does show some evidence which is interesting, except when you look at the evidence it's apparent that he made his post two years ago about episode 8, saying that he's done the same thing, he's read a very early storyboard for episode 8, and the entire thing is wrong and the entire thing is bullshit. So basically, he's got his proof that he's reputable, but it's not proof because the proof is wrong, so I guess that's kind of funny. Along the fact that you can just look at his profile and he's obviously not like a Lucasfilm employee, so yeah, this is obviously fake, but has some cool stuff nonetheless. Basically, it's been five years after The Last Jedi, the Resistance is no longer really a thing, and it's not really a popular idea within the galaxy. Kylo Ren's rule has just become just complete and everyone just kind of accepts that the First Order rules now. Obviously our main characters are still holding on to the hope that 
um, the first order can be driven out. But at this point, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. But they have a mole within the first order that has some sort of lead on some planets in the unknown regions. Now these planets have ancient manufacturing stations on them which are powered by the populations of conquered worlds in the unknown regions and that's where the First Order gets their seemingly just unlimited amount of resources. For them the plot revolves around liberating these people which in the end should take down the First Order because they no longer have those resources. And the second plot is Kylo Ren along with the Knights of Ren hunting down the Force users of the galaxy and many of the Force users of the galaxy find Rey for protection and try to hide from the First Order. So we're basically going to see sort of like a Logan situation where Rey and her group of very, like, you know, young and old um, Force users trying to defend themselves against Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. That I find really cool. But then we get into some of the stuff that I find really weird, because Kylo Ren and Rey still can apparently do their four Skype calls, and they can still manifest their presence in front of each other, and it's slowly revealed that they are secretly in love. Ugh. Raylo sucks. Ugh. I'm kidding, by the way. If they do Raylo right, I have absolutely no reason to not like it. Anyway, the big reveal of the film is that one of Rey's students, I guess, that she's protecting is actually her child and Kylo Ren gets very angry upon finding this and nearly kills Rey, but then he's last minute saved by Leia. Which, uh, I don't know if that can happen unless they recast Leia, but that's okay. Anyway, the whole themes of the movie is going to be secret love and an empire thriving at a terrible cost. Now, I do like a lot of parts of this. I like the whole Kylo Ren and Knights of Ren hunting people down and Rey trying to protect them and then being completely separate from the Resistance plot where they are trying to take down the First Order by trying to pull their resources from underneath them and also liberate the people that they're using to get those resources. And as for the lore, we're going to see some stuff of the Unknown Regions and some more ancient things which could lead into something in the future like an Old Republic show or something like that. So I think this could be quite cool, except there are a lot of gaps that need to be filled and a lot of things that need to be smoothed over. As for what I would want out of this movie, really all I want is just a nice conclusion to the saga, because that's what episode 9 is. I don't just want a conclusion to this trilogy, but I want something that will tie together the whole episode 1 to episode 9 story. I want the balance of the force to be found. I want some just, just a nice conclusion. What I think could be an actually quite cool ending would be the First Order winning, but Kylo Ren steering them more into a balanced direction. They use the dark when they need to, they use the light when they need to, and they have an actually healthy rule. So even though the First Order wins, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And that also ties into Episode 8's themes of there not being any good guys or bad guys. But. As for my episode 9 plot speculation, we're going to save that for another video, because this video has gone on long enough. <laughs> Thank you for all of you who have stuck around this long, that means quite a lot to me. If you want to see more videos like this, leave some comments down below of if you want to see more. Um, if you enjoy this content and want to see more coming out shortly, please hit that subscribe button. I'm sorry that videos don't come out as often as they used to. I am quite under the pump when it comes to school and that sort of thing. But thank you for bearing with me. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great day.